we're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the Word. By book, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, story by story, we're gonna sit at the Master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're gonna start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. We're starting a brand new way of teaching at the feast. We're starting something exciting. God is birthing a whole new generation of people who will hunger to follow the Word. By book, verse by verse 
chapter by chapter, story by story. We're gonna sit at the master's feet with total humility and allow the text as divinely inspired to speak to our hearts. Get ready because we're gonna start this journey of longing and really understanding God and His Word for you. and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, we now acknowledge your sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and, and to, to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters that, that I have greatly sinned in my, my thoughts, thoughts my words, words in what I've done and, and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy.
God who showed the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path. Give all who, for the faith they profess, are recounted Christians, the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down, and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth, my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The seed that falls on the good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. Thus have you prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clothes, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. The seed that falls on ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have crowned the year with your bounty, and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing clothes the hills. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. The seed that falls on good ground will yield a fruitful harvest. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hope that creation itself will be set free from the slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to matthew glory to you o lord on that day jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea such large crowds gathered around him 
that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirtyfold. Whoever has ears ought to hear. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Maganda umaga po sa inyong lahat na patuloy na sumusubaybay ng Sambuhay TV Mass mula ho sa iba't ibang panig ng daydig sa ating mga magigiting na frontliners na nanonood ngayon sa mga kapatid natin na OFWs sa mga may sakit at nagpapagaling sa kanilang tahanan at ospital at sa inyong lahat mga kasambuhay nawa ang pagpapala ng Diyos ang biyaya ng uh, paghilom at pag-asa ay nawamapa sa inyong lahat. Kayo ba ay isang taong matagumpay? Are you a successful person? What is your definition of success? Maaring ito yung katanungan na na-encounter nyo during the job interview. Iba-iba ho ang ating uh, pagpapakahulugan at karanasan sa tagumpay natin sa buhay. Maaaring ang ating tagumpay ay pagtatapos ng isang gawain o pagkamit ng ating mga hangarin sa buhay. Maaaring ang isang tao matagumpay sa kanyang uh, studies o kaya career, pero hindi siya mapalad sa love life o may problema sa kanyang buhay, pamilya. Maaaring ang tagumpay ng isang tao ay panandalian. Pero meron tayong sinasabing enduring success. Naalala ko yung nabasa ko ng article sa Harvard Business Review. Sabi nung uh, nagsulat ng article, success, it's a complicated term. It's multidimensional. And for a person, and for a person to become successful, kailangan may apat daw na components. Happiness, achievement, significance, and legacy. Hassel. Happiness. Tatanuin daw natin hindi lamang happy ba ako, pero makabulahan ba ang aking buhay? Contento ba ako? Sabi nga nila, contentment is the greatest wealth. Second, achievement. Yung ating tagumpay ba sa buhay, eh masasabi nating natatangi, kakaiba. Third, significance. Yung success ba natin sa buhay, has it created a positive impact in the lives of other people? Hindi lamang pansarili, kundi para sa ibang tao. And fourth, legacy. Yung success pa natin sa buhay has become a stepping stone in the success of other people. Are you living a successful life? Or is that the right question? Should we aim simply for a successful life? Or there is something more? A fruitful life? A faithful life? Hindi porket tayo ay uh, matagumpay sa buhay, e eh mabunga na tayo. Kasi maaaring ang ating tagumpay, it's something selfish. Marami tayong nasagasaan na tao, nanlilang tayo ng kapwa. Kinitil natin ang kalayaan ng ibang tao. A successful life does not mean a fruitful life. When we are successful, we stand up. 
we stand out for our achievements. But when we live a fruitful life, and then we allow others, we bless others, and in blessing others, we help them to stand up in their own realities sa mga paghihirap sa buhay. Ang ating mapagbasa ngayon, inaanyayahan tayo, wag lamang nating hangarin maging matagumpay. But nawa tayo ay maging mabunga sa ating pamumuhay. Living a fruitful life. Narinig natin sa ating ebanghelyo you know, ang uh, talinghaga ng maghasik at uh, o yung sinasabi nila talinghaga ng mga buto o butin. Sinasabi sa ating ebanghelyo, not every moment of our life, we are all successful. We are all fruitful. May mga pagkakataon na ang ating buhay ay parang aspalto. No? O yung ating puso ay parang aspalto. Masyadong matigas. No? Kaya walang chance o opportunity that the seed of God's love and God's hope would flourish. May mga pagkakataon ng ating buhay ay parang uh, masasabi nating mabato. Yes, masaya tayo, we welcome God's will in our lives, pero kokonti yung lupa, lupa, na maaring itong seed of God's love ay tumubo at mag-flourish. O maaaring ang buhay natin ay parang thorn, thorny ground. Matinig. Maaring tumubo ang binhi o butil ng kabutihan ng Diyos. Pero hindi ito namumunga. Because we are overwhelmed with so much problems from the world. Seasons of our life. Seasons of our soul, ika nga. Minsan aspalto, minsan mabato, minsan matinig, minsan mabunga. Paano nga ba ang pagkakaroon ng isang mabungang pamumuhay? Tatlo ho. Una, we beg for the gift of understanding. Pag-unawa. Sabi sa Ebanghelyo, huwag lamang daw nating pakinggan ang salita ng Diyos, kundi unawain isa puso, isa buhay. Una sa lahat, ang pag-unawa, it's a gift from God. The gift of understanding is not total comprehension of everything in our lives, but it is understanding with the mind with the heart, with the eyes of God. Pag-unawa. Sabi nila, love is the eye. Ang mga taong nagmamahal, ang tunay na kauunawa sa sitwasyon at sa mga tao sa paligid. Love is the eye. We do not aim to understand everything in our life. Why? Because there are many things in our life that it is not meant to be understood, but to be accepted as it is in faith and in hope. Ang tunay na nagmamahal ay nakauunawa. The other name of love is understanding. And we cannot love when we do not and are able to understand another person. Ikalawa, the gift of patience. Patience. Muli sabi sa Ebanghelyo, God continues to sow good things in our heart, in our lives. Kahit na pinipili natin ang ating buhay ay parang isang aspalto, 
o kaya pinipili natin ang mabato o matinik na landas. God would continue to sow goodness in our heart. May mga nagsasabing commentators na ang Diyos daw, He's a lavish sower. No? Lavish sower. At nagtataya, mapagtaya ang Diyos. Dahil patuloy siyang nagmamahal sa atin. Be patient. God is doing His work in all of us. We are all God's project in progress, so to speak. At sabi nga sa ating ikalawang pagbasa, no? may mga obstacles in this project of God to make us a better person. Andyan ang jablo, andyan ang uh, kahinaan mismo sa ating sarili, andyan ang pangaabuso mismo ng ating kalayaan. Kaya may kahirapan, kaya may kamatayan, But these are all part of the groaning of creation. Sabi nga ni San Pablo, naghihinaing ang Diyos, ang sangkatauhan. Ngayong pandemic, hindi lang naman tayo yung naghihinaing. Very clear in our reading, second reading, it is the Spirit of God groaning in us, through us, with us. So, hindi natin dapat tanungin. So, ano na, Lord, pagkatapos ng pandemic? Bakit, Lord? Anong nangyari? Anyari, Lord? Bakit? Kasi wala akong kasagutan ng Diyos. Ang tanging response ng Diyos sa atin is to groan with us, in us. Is to weep with us is to continue to grow but in hope. Kasi ang Diyos ay patuloy na umaasa dahil siya mismo ay saligan ng ating pag-asa. Yung po ang ating ikatlong punto. We beg for the gift of hope. Sabi ni Propeta Isaias sa unang pagbasa, yung ulan daw, hindi yan babalik sa Diyos sa langit hanggat it, hindi ito dinidiligan yung mga halaman o kaya it allows the plants to grow. Hindi yan babalik sa langit. Ibig sabihin, tapat ang Diyos sa Kanyang salita. Umaasa tayo sa Diyos sa Kanyang salita. Salita na nagbibigay pag-asa at hindi salita na puro paasa. Paano nga ba ang umasa? Hope is not simply what? Wishful thinking. Hope is not simply optimism. I believe na magiging okay ang buhay ko bukas. Hope is more than that. Sabi nga ni Benedict XVI, ang ating buhay, we are living with greater and lesser hopes. But we have that ultimate hope in God, in His Word. Siguro marami hong mga kasambuhay o mismo tayo nagsasabi, Naku, Father, ang hirap ng umasa. Ang hirap umasa sa kalooban ng Diyos. Ang hirap umasa na ang kabutihan ay may mamayani in the end. But that is the beginning of hope. When we continue to wake up in the morning and we continue to do good things for their own sake. Yun ang pamumuhay sa pag-asa. Patuloy na gumawa ng kabutihan. We do not expect God to have a control of this pandemic. But God's rule, God's control, God's sovereignty is manifested in the good works that we do every day. 
the little things that we do for our loved ones para sa kanilang kabutihan. My dear friends, as we proceed with our Eucharistic celebration, our readings once again invites us, let us not simply aim for a successful life, but for a fruitful life. Even as we beg the Lord for three gifts, the gift of understanding, the gift of patience, and the gift of hope. For only then that our lives can be a good ground in which the good seed from the Lord will yield a bountiful harvest. Amen. We now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, open our hearts to your Son. that we may have recourse to God's Word in order to be trained in holiness and be equipped for every good work, we pray. Father, open our hearts to your Son, that those in public service may derive strength and inspiration from the Word of God and follow the example of Christ in serving the people, we pray. Father, Father open, open our, our hearts, hearts to your Son, son that those who are severely tried by suffering and anxiety, those who are tempted by the values of the world, and those who grow cold in faith, may hold on to God's word for courage and consolation, we pray. Father, open our hearts to your Son. May the Lord welcome in His loving embrace and peace those who are dying today and all the souls who are in need most of His mercy. We pray. Father, open our hearts to your Son. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Father, open our hearts to your Son. All the prayers and petitions we ask for Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
pray be offended by sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look upon the offerings of the church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people form as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ in the temple of the Holy Spirit, might, to the praise of your manifold wisdom, be manifest as the Church. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Father of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like to do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, the church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we now dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sent your apostles, peace I live you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with her will for the been reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> God, behold, and it takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Prayer During Communion For those who cannot receive communion, join us in praying the spiritual communion. Jesus, Master, you assure me, I am the life. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. In baptism and in the sacrament of reconciliation, you have communicated to me this life of yours. Now you nourish it by making yourself my food. Take my heart, detach it from the vain things of the world. With all my heart, I love you above all things because you are infinite good and eternal happiness. Amen. Let us pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Um, Oratio Imperata, God our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19. Let us serve and even live lives. We pray that you guide the people to task to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our Lady we Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungson, pray for us. Blessed James Alberione, pray for us. Blessed Timothy Jacardo, pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, God speaks to us through this verse to remind us how He will always be for us and never against us. That whatever we are up against, it is no match to Jesus. That He never lost a battle and is not going to start with yours. In this time of uncertainty, we are reminded how God chose to fight our battles for us as He turns things around for good in His glory. Our God never fails. The victory is ours, for our God will never ever fail. Let's come to worship Him in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. But it won't prosper When the darkness falls It won't prevail Cause the God I serve Knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you,
Amen. Amen. Our God never fails and the victory is ours. Yes? Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Feast at Home of Makati District. I'm Brother Eb Magtuba. Welcome to our service today. I pray for your safety. I pray for God's provision in your life and your family. Friend, if you feel today, you're feeling trapped kasi sa bahay ka lang, naka-quarantine. If you feel worried of the things that will happen. I have good news for you. I want you to believe that today God will expand his territory starting at your own self, starting at your at your own home. And I want you to believe today that you will experience his his presence in your life. Welcome to the feast at home. Welcome first timers. If you're a first timer, um, I'm happy that you're here. We have a special gift for you. Oh, and if you're a regular viewer in this page, in this ser every every service, uh, I want you to click that share button and have a comment. Pag may nakita kang power statement, just put that in the comment box so that everyone will know. But if you are, if you want to share this message of God's hope and love to as many people as possible, tag them, tag them, click that share button. And of course, after this live streaming service, we have a small group sessions. It's very powerful. I want you to join that one. It will bless you hundred folds. Okay. And again, if you're a first timer, we have a we're a first timer. We have a gift for you. Just type in the comment box first time, and someone will connect to you. Okay, let's start with something funny today. Are you ready? One of the biggest struggles with with what's happening ngayon, because only people with glasses will feel this. To let go, yung ang labu na ng, ng ng glasses mo. Tapos kating kating ka na. Tapos gusto mo ng iwipe. Tapos hindi mo maano, di ba? Grabe. Pero kung gusto mong, kung gusto mo talaga at medyo limited yung budget, no? gusto mo talagang safe, limited ang budget, aba, pwede kang mag-innovate. Ito, pwede mo gawin ito. Can you show it, bro? Ito. Yan. Wala. O sige. Ayan. Ayan. Pwede mong gawin yan. Di ba? Ay, no. So, just to, just, just to start light. Are you ready to be blessed? If you're ready to be blessed, let's pray our favorite prayer here in the feast. In the name of the Father, in the Son, in the Holy Spirit, amen. Together with me, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. 
Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, and I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want you to raise your hands and extend it to, to God's the, to the Holy Scripture and let's sing together. Thy word, O God. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. Let's the title of our talk for today is This This is a Revolution. Yeah, this is a revolution. And today I would like to preach on a message, expand his territory. And we're still in the book of Matthew, the gospel about the King Jesus announcing his, his new kingdom. And today, so today, we're going to dissect the most important prayer in this kingdom. Ano yun? The Our Father. Yes, the Our Father. Who knows this prayer? Everybody knows this prayer, the Our Father. Everybody. And nobody. Bakit ko nasabi yun? Because most of us are jaded. Listen, the biggest hindrance to deeper knowledge is shallow knowledge. We lose our capacity for wonder over a prayer that we've prayed a million times. Di ba? Nung bata pa, pinipray na natin to. Today, we will change that. Here's an analogy. Analogy ito. I'll help you. I've been married for seven years now. And naging boyfriend and girlfriend kami for three years. Ni Maan, my wife now. And that's total 10 years. 10 years. And it's so easy. It's so easy to say, I know Maan already. But if I want my marriage to keep growing, I should say, I don't know Maan. Because she's still a beautiful mystery to me. If, I, if you're married, alam mo, ibig kong sabihin, that there are days when you say, Huh? Who are you? Sino ka? Everybody, I'm still a, I'm still on a joyful quest of discovering her that I did not know where there. Okay. In the same way, we we when we say I, I know the our father, we should also say, I don't know the our father. This is the approach I, I want you to, to take today. Okay. There are so many things we don't know about this powerful prayer. And my invitation. My invitation to you watching now, at the end of this talk, I want you to pray this prayer like it's your first time, okay? It's your first, as if it's for your first time. And in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 15, let's read it together. Okay, let's read it together Our uh, in our NLT Catholic version, okay? Our Father in heaven. May your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then give us today the food we need. And forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. If you, ito, maganda to. If you forgive those who sin against you, your fatherly, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Grabe, di ba? Amen. Wow. That's a powerful prayer. Today we will dive into this prayer. We will dive on that and you will, you will see uh, you will see it and you will feel it in Jesus' eyes and heart. All right? But before that, let's pray together. Can you put your hands over your chest and close your eyes and say these words after me? Father in heaven, thank you for all the blessings. Thank you, Jesus, for keeping my family safe. Today, Lord, I asked you to help me to have an open heart and mind, to know you more, to love you more, and to love the people around me. In Jesus' name, amen. Brothers and sisters, let's raise our hands. Let's extend our hands to the, to the Holy Scripture and let's sing together. Thy word, O God. Thy word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto 
my path. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you happy you're here? Yes. <laughs> I'm so happy. Uh, kahit naka-online tayo, I, I'm, I'm able to serve you. So before we dive into this prayer itself, let's describe the Our Father in two important ways. Okay, how many? Two. And dalawa. First is, this prayer is relational. Can you say that? Relational. When Jesus taught the Our Father, it was not just memorized prayer. Okay? He was exposing his heart and making his making us hear the very heartbeat of his intimate relationship with the Father. So every line, every line pulsates with love and many don't see prayer in that way. Why? Ask me why. Because most prayers fall in three categories, three kinds. First is help me prayer. Meron ding, I'm sorry prayer. And meron ding, thank you prayer. So if you notice, all of them, they are good, but all of them are reactive. Yes, they're reactive. It means something happened, and that's why we pray. We say, example, example. We say, help me when problems happen, diba? When we say, I'm sorry when, when we sin, and, and, and thank you when we, when we receive blessings, diba? And all are reactive. Can you say that word? Reactive. Yeah, and all are reactive. But effective prayer can't be just reactive. All healthy relationships are not reactive, but proactive. Say that word, proactive. Husbands, if you give your wife flowers at ang sabi sa'yo, anong kasalanan mo ngayon? Nak, it's reactive. Bakit? Because something wrong with the relationship. May mali, may maling nangyari. I don't talk to Maan because I need something from her. Help me or did something wrong, I'm sorry, or something she did nice to me, thank you. Nothing has to happen for me to talk to her. I talk to her, my wife, because I love talking with her. I talk to her regularly, intimately, proactively, and means on with intensity pag nag So first, things first, muna tayo. To Jesus, prayer, listen to this, this is very important. Prayer is a heart-to-heart -heart relationship with God. It's a heart-to-heart -heart relationship. Prayer must be a daily relational habit. Friend, I hope I hope you carve out daily time with God in your in your schedule, no? Parang appointment din yan. Ini nilalagay talaga you protect your 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 appointment with God. Parang date. Yes. The most important person in the universe, diba? Hang out with him, sit with him, chat with him, and listen to his word. Here's the second description. Second description is this. This prayer is revolutionary. Aminin na natin. Much of our prayers are me-focused. Yes, and that's fine. Okay lang naman yun. We all start that way. Like babies who see the world as solar system, that they are the sun, and everyone else, mommy, daddy, kuya, ate, yaya, even God are planets that revolve around him and his needs. He needs milk, cry. He's bored, cry. Something is itchy, cry. And one of his slaves will come to the rescue. But if you look at the Our Father, you discover after the one-line introduction, our, the our Father who are in heaven, there, there follows two distinct Parts, which three petition with three petitions in each part. Ano yun? Ito, part one. You look look at this. Part one. Holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Do you notice? Do you notice something? The three requests are all focused on God. They're all focused on God. They're not focused on Jesus. Diba? And part part two, part two, ito. So part two. Give us, read this. Give us this day our daily, our uh, this, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The three requests are focused not on me, but on on us. It's focused on us. The prayer isn't give me 
my daily bread, but the prayer gives us our daily bread. More on this later, huh? More on this later. So the Our Father is God-focused and other-focused. So the question is this, doesn't that sound familiar? Di ba parang familiar? Was just, Jesus was patterning the, other, the Our Father prayer to the two greatest commandments. Ano yun? What is that? Ask me what? Ask me what? Love God and love your neighbor. Di ba? So this is the prayer of a revolution. This is not just cute child's prayer. This is a revolution. We're, we're kicking out the old king and installing a new one when we pray the Our Father. We're dethroning ourselves as king of our lives and, and we're enthroning Jesus as our new king. And line by line, you will see how revolutionary this prayer. Let's begin. Yes, hindi pa tayo nagsisimula. Ito pa. Oh, let's begin. Are you ready? Can you put in the comment box, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yan. Okay, let's go. Our Father who are in heaven. And our Father who are in heaven. In the time of Jesus, there were some rabbis, or teachers of the law, that called Father God. That called God Father. Pero super konti lang sila. Friends, ito ang uniqueness ni Jesus. Father was, quote-unquote, Father was almost the only way he addressed God. Okay, let me tell you a story. One day, my wife asked me to come to her in a gathering, and I thought, sige, okay lang, let's go. In my mind, another party, and driver, tapos sama-sama, ganun lang. Little did I know, it was in Malacanang Palace, with all the VIP people in the country and other countries. Grabe talaga, and the ambassadors and the president himself and it was a privilege to be there and, and chat with them and and so on my way home i felt vip din diba i mean bakit naman hindi i spent many hours with with people top level in the government head of states of other countries and private chairman of the board of other of private companies diba but the moment my car parked at home and i entered the door sa bahay everything became clear to me i knew the two heads of states I would meet. That day, I spent time with my king and queen who conquered my heart. My heart. My boy, Eli, and my, my girl, Via. And so together, we did very high-level, world-changing work. Alam mo, ano yun? Drawing fish and snakes, playing with airplanes, diba? <laughs> jumping up and down, watching YouTube's YouTube kids, oops, patay ako kay Maan. <laughs> Bawal. <laughs> Why did I spend many hours with them? Because I believe that before I'm, I'm a preacher, a leader, an entrepreneur, I'm a father. So, brothers and sisters, I invite you, if you want to help others follow, know God and follow God, discipleship, it's called discipleship, discipleship happen, must happen first. Not in church, not in ministry must happen first at home. At home. If you're a father, that's your number one role. To bring your family to know Jesus in a personal way. To fall in love with God. That's your role. Father, if you're listening to me. Okay? And, and everyone else in the family. And I suspect that God will say the same thing. This is just my opinion, huh? and you can disagree with me. I think before God is supreme judge and king of kings, the whole universe, first, he is a father. He is a father. Okay? That's why I invite you to join our, our small groups after the service or even any time of the week. It's where we, we dig in. We know more. We fall in love with our God. Okay, just type in the comment box, small group, and someone will connect to you. And next, holy be your name. Holy be your name. When I was young, hindi ko maintindihan ito. Why, why should I pray that his name become holy? Isn't God holy enough? Diba? And does God really need my help for, this, for his name to be holy? I didn't, hindi ko gets and, until I learned what holy and name means in the Bible. 
for for modern people a name is simply a label parang label lang like 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 an id dito nilalagay we we pin on our shirt but for jewish mind okay in the time of jesus the, a name isn't just a label okay it's a revel, it's the revelation of of my character and person but sadly we mud on God's name. Why? Because we 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 put we gave God a bad name. Bakit? I remember the story of Mahatma Gandhi. Example. Ito. Mahatma Gandhi. Kilala niyo naman siguro si Mahatma Gandhi. As a young man, he was reading the Gospels. Yes, binasa niya yung Gospels. And he was so fascinated with Jesus that he walked into a church in Calcutta, India. But the ushers didn't let him in inside the church because only they accepted high caste Indians or, or white people. Eh, hindi siya ganun. India was, ha, has five categories. The, from Brahmins at the very top and the Dalits or the outcasts at the bottom. But from, from that experience, he said, to sabi ni Mahatma Gandhi, I like Christ, but I don't like Christians. We're not very good representatives of God. But not representing him well, we violated one of the big ten. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. Anong sinabi doon? You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And so when we pray, holy be your name, we're praying that we can restore God's name. Yes, we can restore God's name. We want to represent him better, which is connected to the next prayer. Ano yung next prayer? Ito, let's read. Your, your kingdom come. And then your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is it. This is his mission. This is the reason why he came on earth. This is what Jesus is all about. The Our Father is the, pray, is the prayer of revolution. Jesus was building his kingdom. And he was using a revolutionary prayer to teach his followers, you and me, the most important lifestyle within this territory, within this kingdom. Question, do you want to follow Jesus? Do you want to follow Jesus? Yes or no? Don't just pray this prayer. Live this prayer. Because it contains in condensed form what it means to follow Jesus. Say this with me, starting today. Can you sabihin mga to after? Say these words after me. Go. Starting today, I will not just pray the Our Father. I will live this prayer. Amen. Praise God. I believe in you. So the next question, I'm about to end. Next question is this. Do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go to heaven? For sure. Yes. Yes. For many religious people, for many people, the highest goal is to go to heaven. Their ambition is to be good boy or good girl on planet Earth so that when they die, they get a permanent visa to this lovely retirement home called paradise. Diba? And they believe Jesus is that visa and the church is the spaceship to heaven. And Christianity, they believe that Christianity is, is seen as the great escape from this sinful world. But let me shock you. Let me shock you. Ito yung, ito yung imagine, ito y at best, at best, this is half true. At worst, it's a distortion of the essence of the gospel. Why? Because this isn't the core message of Jesus. Hindi ako mapapagod sabihin ito sa'yo. Or to anyone else, to everybody. Our God mission is not to go to heaven. Yes, your God mission, our God mission is not to go to heaven. Eh ano? To bring heaven down on earth. To expand the boundaries of his kingdom in this heaven down in this territory. To expand the boundaries of, of God in this world. Friends, Christianity is not the great escape. Christianity is the great expansion. How? Ask me how. Now, at this part, I want you to put all your attention, 100% focus. Get your pen. 
to our beloved district builder as he shares to us how Christianity isn't a great escape, but a great expansion. Now let's welcome Brother Randy Borromeo. Brother Randy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eb. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. That was powerful. And thank you for preaching. And thank you for the word of God spoken through Brother Eb. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning. Wherever you are in the world, I greet you. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening. And uh, yes, Brother Eb said it right that it's not, a, it's the, the, the kingdom of heaven is not designed to be in heaven, just heaven, but our mission is to bring heaven down to earth. And let me just start by saying that if you do not enter heaven here on earth, brothers and sisters, you will not enter heaven after this life. If you do not enter heaven here on earth, you cannot and will not enter heaven, okay? Because the goal is to bring heaven down to earth. And uh, that is the mission of Jesus, and that is also our mission. But the, 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 our, father, the our Father reminds us that, yes, while we want and need the kingdom to expand, the kingdom to reach every corner, nook, and cranny of the whole earth, okay, before it expands with Jesus, before it expands physically, we need to expand the kingdom of heaven inside of us. Before you expand God's kingdom in this world, you must expand God's kingdom in you. Is that clear? Because we need, we cannot give what we do not have, and we need to understand what it is like to live and experience heaven so that we can tell people what our experience was, okay? So it's, it's uh, Jesus in the middle and heaven, Jesus bridging heaven and us, okay? So it's you inside of you, and heaven and Jesus at the center. Now, my question is, how much of your life is ruled by Jesus? How much of your life is ruled by Jesus? I mean, in, in your house, how many rooms are you not allowing Jesus to enter? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you can relate to that, that when you have visitors, you try to put everything in a room and close that room, and you give instructions, strict instructions, nobody enters this room. Because why? Why? Because all our junk, all our kalat is placed in that room. Similarly, in our heart, what room is Jesus not allowed to enter? How much of your life is ruled by Jesus? Our goal is to expand God's territory in our lives. Our goal is to open up all the rooms so that Jesus can come in. Open up all the rooms so that Jesus can, can reach in and change that whole room. Remember, it's God's kindness that will lead us to repentance. It's God's kindness that will change us. So we need to expand his territory. Okay? expand his territory. I need you to type that in the chat box, expand his territory. I, I want you to add something to that. Expand his territory in me. Expand his territory in me. Open up the rooms in your life. Open up the rooms that are prohibited from, 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 from uh, being seen. And uh, let's... let's let, let's allow the light of Jesus just enter and change the whole arrangement of that room. How much of your life is ruled by Jesus? Let's go to the next part of that prayer. Give us today our daily bread. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I like eating bread, um, different kinds of bread, focaccia. Um, I like pandesal. But, uh, but, but some, some experts, religious experts, believe that when, when Jesus said this prayer, um, Jesus was talking about him being the Eucharist, the bread of life, him, him uh, um, 
you, you know, when he instituted the, the, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, it, it was him becoming bread. Um, but, but you know what I think? And when, let, let me just share with you what I think. I think this is a prayer for practical bread. Give us today our daily bread. Why did I say that? How, 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 how did I arrive at that conclusion? I want to remind you, brothers and sisters, that in the Sermon on the Mount and in the, in, in, in the ministry of Jesus, his main audience were poor, poor people. And uh, they were, they were in, in, in our language, these are people who, uh, who are called isang kahig isang tuka. They, they, they don't have enough food for the day. And uh, they, they, they just take whatever they can and then eat it for today and tomorrow. And this, this reminds us um, about the miracle, the manna in the desert. When, desert, when, the, uh, when the Israelites were in the desert, they prayed for food and manna came. It's like flakes coming coming down, sky flakes coming down from uh, uh, from heaven. And then uh, they could not even keep that because the next day it will be spoiled. And uh, that that this is you know this refers to that time also when they got their daily bread. So give us today our daily bread. I just want to share with you three. Um, um, three things about uh, the daily bread, about this being practical. I believe that God is practical. I believe that, yes, he is king, but he is practical. I, I heard this from uh, Father Steve Tynan, and he told me, Randy, if you study the lives of the saints, you will see that if it's a choice between something that's practical and something that's really, really, really so hard, the saints chose the things that are practical. And uh, that tells us also that God is a practical God. Okay, three things. Number one, God is concerned for your practical needs. He thinks about that. If it concerns you, it concerns him. He, uh, he, he knows that we need bread to eat. He knows your need. He knows your every single need, your little needs and your big needs. That's why you can bring before God your small needs, but you can also bring before him your big needs, your dreams, your, uh, your aspirations. Pray for a job. Pray for a new house. Pray for a car. If that's what you need, and if, that, if that's what will help you, do what God wants you to do. So bring it before him because God is concerned about your practical needs. Number two, God is the source of every blessing. I want to speak to those who don't have needs at the moment. Maybe this pandemic has been good to you. Uh, I understand that a lot of businesses have closed, but uh, there are several, there are some businesses that, th that thrived and actually grew. I know several, and uh, some say that they grew by 30, 60%. Some grew by 300%. And I, and I want to speak to you. Every time you say, give us this day our daily bread, I hope and pray that we're reminded that God is the source of every blessing. That yes, you worked hard for it. Yes, you planned hard for it. Yes, you had all these. But scripture says that we plan. But when it comes to execution, it's God that makes it happen. Our plans are plans, okay? And it helps us so that we will have ordered steps. Teach us to number our days so we will have hearts of wisdom, scripture says. But God is a source of every blessing, that without God's blessing, that without God's approval, these blessings will not come into our life. Okay? So every time you say, give us today our daily bread, just always remember, if you're having the, the time of your life, if you're having it all good at this time, just remember that God is a source of your blessing. And, 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 and can I say, can I add that, let's have a grateful heart. All right? God is a source of every blessing. Third, God wants you to share to the hungry. Yes, that's always the plan. God, God, Jesus spoke to the poor people. And Jesus reminded his disciples that, that we need to think about the poor people. In fact, the, the Roman Catholic Church in the, in the Council of the Laity, um, um, when, when, uh, when they gathered many years ago, and, and they had this, and this is a major resolution that us Catholics, we should have the, the, 
we should have give preferential option to the poor. We need to think about our brothers and sisters who are less fortunate. So God, the third is God wants you to share to the hungry. Remember, remember the, the prayer is give us this day our daily bread. It's not give me the day my daily bread. It's very easy to think about what you're going to eat. But just before you take a bite, just wherever you are, if you're having lunch, dinner, merienda, or wherever, before taking a bite, just think. Just think. You have food on your table. But we have brothers and sisters who are going hungry. And that prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. It doesn't say, give me this day our, my daily bread, because God wants us to think of our brothers. That's why as long as there is a person who is hungry, as long as there is a person who is in need financially, our ministry exists. Our ministry will be there. I want you to know, I want you to investigate about the light of Jesus' family and the ministries that we are helping because this is what we think. If my brother is hungry, I am hungry too. In fact, we take this from Acts chapter 2, verse 44, where it says that every they shared everything they had after receiving the Holy Spirit into their lives. They shared everything they had. Brothers and sisters, you are your brother's keeper. You cannot, you cannot discount the fact that there are people who are suffering. So you cannot just say, bahala na sila, because you are your brother's keeper. All right? Let's move on. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. I believe, brothers and sisters, that forgiveness is a core issue of the kingdom. Remember I told you, that if you don't enter heaven here on earth, you cannot enter heaven after. Okay. Um, now, and and, and I, I'd like to add to that. There is a door to heaven. And that door is named forgiveness. There is a door to heaven and that door is called forgiveness. If you didn't notice, Jesus threw a lot of forgiveness parties. He, he hosted dinners, lunches. He spent time with the sinners, the scum of the earth. And that was his reputation. Brothers and sisters, what is your reputation? Do you look at people from head to toe and judge them right away? Again, if Jesus threw forgiveness parties, shouldn't our church do that? Shouldn't you continue to do that? Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And this is a very dangerous prayer because if you, if, if, if you will study this prayer, it's like praying, Lord, don't forgive me if I don't forgive others. Don't forgive me if I don't forgive others. It's like the golden rule. Do unto me. Uh, um, do, do unto others what you want others to do unto you. So forgiveness is an issue. All right? It's an issue. It's a core issue. Forgiveness. Matthew 6, 14, let's quote that. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Okay, let me just give you two things to remember, okay? Number one, forgiveness is a process. It is a process. I don't think it happens overnight, okay? Again, I'm just being practical about it. It doesn't happen overnight. So it, you, 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 you cannot just forgive, especially if you've been deeply hurt, if you've been deeply wounded. Um, what, ha what needs to happen is that you need to go through a process. It's a process. You need to go through steps. And the first process, the first step is to make a decision, which I want you to do right now. Make a decision to forgive. That's how it starts. I have people in my life who are very hard to forgive, but I've made that decision many times. I've prayed to God, and I want you to pray this. I, I, I pray to God, Father, I want to forgive. Please help me forgive. I make this decision to forgive right now. So forgiveness is a process. Be patient with yourself. It starts with that, and then God honors that decision, and then one day you will discover and realize, wow, 
I have it in my heart to forgive. Now, how do you know if you're ready to forgive? It's when you're ready to pray or say a blessing for that person. If you can honestly and sincerely say, God, please bless that person. God, please bless that enemy of mine. God, please bless that. Toot, 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 toot. Forgiveness is a process. And, and, and that's a prayer. Lord, help me to forgive. Second, forgiveness and reconciliation are two different things. We mix that up. When we say forgiveness, sometimes we're thinking about reconciliation, but there are two, these are two things. Forgiveness requires the action of one person. Like, I can forgive. Okay, I can forgive. I can make a decision to forgive. But reconciliation, it needs and it requires the act of two people. Okay, because it takes two to tango. There can never be reconciliation with just one party agreeing to reconcile. So, again, forgiveness and reconciliation are two different things. It starts with forgiveness. Maybe because you're geographically separated, maybe you are from the both ends of the world and opposite ends of the world. Uh, but So there can be no reconciliation, but forgiveness can always happen. And then God will take care of the reconciliation. So remember this, when you forgive, don't think reconciliation. I mean, you know, don't mistake it for reconciliation. Reconciliation happens after forgiveness. What needs to happen first is that there needs to be forgiveness, not for the other person, but more for us. Because unforgiveness is like taking poison and wishing that your enemy dies. Okay? All right? So I, I hope that's clear. Okay? Let's move on. Okay? Um, do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. This is a, a reality that's, that, that we can see that when we ever, every time we pray that, we just, we just confirm and uh, we're just being true to uh, the, the fact that we're surrounded by evil. And it is a prayer that, Lord, if there's going to be evil, there's evil around me, Lord, please spare me. Okay, and familiar prayer, Matthew 26, verse 39b. This is Jesus' prayer. My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. And we can pray that. Lord, if it's really possible, can I not go through this trial? But again, I, 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 I have a talk on that, that, that God will try us. God will allow us to go through experiences that are beyond our cap capacity and capability to endure. Why? Because we need His grace. And, and, and we need His grace. And every time we say this prayer, do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. We're saying, Lord, there's a lot of evil. If it's possible, let me, let me be spared. But, but I, want you, I want to remind you about that prayer after. The prayer, Jesus' prayer, after that prayer, uh, after saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. At the end of the day, you end your prayer by saying, Lord, but Lord, yet I want your will to be done, not mine. You can pray as the, 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 the biggest prayers in your life. But in the end, just say, Lord, whatever your will is, I'm willing to surrender. I'm willing to surrender. Okay, so so forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Wonderful prayer, our Father. Um, they're expanding his territory. Talking about expanding the territory. There's a prayer, and in First Chronicles four verse ten. Okay, and and this prayer um, became famous because of a book. It's called The Prayer of Jabez, and uh, Bruce Wilkerson um, wrote that, and it became a bestseller, okay? And I pray this. I pray this also, and uh, I'd like to read that to you. Oh, that you would bless me enlar and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. I think as human beings, I think as living people, 
our natural tendency is to grow. Our natural tendency is to expand. Our natural wish, or I think it's in our DNAs, that we, we need to grow and to extend and to expand. And it's a wonderful prayer. It, it's a wonderful prayer. Okay? So, so that, that prayer of Jabez. But, 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 listen, listen. Listen to me. We need to graduate. We can always pray that. But we can't just pray that. But we need to graduate from the prayer of Jabez to the prayer of Jesus. I'll, 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 I'll try to explain to you why. Because in, in, in that, in the verse that we just read in First Chronicles 4 verse 10, it talks about me. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with praying for me. But we cannot stop there. Okay? Because, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory and let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will, I will be free from pain and God granted this request. But we need to graduate from that prayer to the prayer of Jesus. Again, this is a revolution. This is a revolution. And I'd like you to pray that prayer with me. The prayer that we just talked about. The Our Father, probably one of the most powerful prayers that we can ever pray. Because this is a prayer that Jesus taught us. And it covered all of life. All of the things that we need. All right? So I'm going to invite you to pray this with me. And pray this from your heart. And think about whatever Brother Eb talked about and what I shared with you. Our Father. Let's do this together. Our Father who are in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen and amen. And my prayer is that God will expand His territory inside of you so that it will go from inside of you and go outward and that it will ex encourage you and push you to reach, reach out and reach our brothers and sisters who need to hear about this wonderful prayer. And this is my prayer for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue to worship God. Just as what the Lord's Prayer teaches us, give us today our daily bread. God reminds us that He makes a way for us to get our needs, that He blesses us through His miracles, that His promises will never fail us, and His light will shine through so that we can share our blessings. Our Father in heaven, we expand your territory here on earth as we come together to worship you. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. You are here. Moving in honest, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker. Darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touch. 
Yes, Lord, you are a miracle worker and you're a promise keeper. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for joining us. But before we end, I would like to share you something, uh, a little story before we give. Um, alam mo, before, hindi talaga ako nagbibigay kay Lord. Oh, hindi ko nga alam kung tithe pala ang tawag nun. So, nung hindi pa ako napunta sa Charisma, that's uh, the feast or dito sa movement natin, um, uh, I'm already engaged in business. And what I did is I I I went to mentors and yung business mentor ko ang nagturo sa akin to give. Okay? Ang term niya, give. So what I did, uh, sinunod ko naman. Oh, sige, magbigay ako. Sabi niya, you can give to charity or you can give to your church. Okay, fine. So nagmamas naman ako every Sunday and what happened is, uh, puta ako doon sa, sa chapel. And then, alam mo, ang intent ko talaga is sundin yung mentor, business mentor ko. And what happened is, bumunot ako. Di ba? Bumunot ako. Eh, nung time na yon, ito, matagal na to, ha? Ma time na yon, um, what I have is coins. <laughs> coins, yes! Yung may carabao pa, di ba? So, talagang, ano, dag, talagang may force na pumipigil. But, binigay ko na, dumaan yon yung, ano, ang tawag doon, yung lagayan, yung love offering na lagayan. So, nilagay ko. And I felt happy because I did. I did it. And the next Sunday, the same thing. And na-notice ko, um, yung business na sinisimulan ko noon, nag-grow. Wala akong bagong ginawa. The same thing. Nag-grow. Nag-grow ang profits into, into almost a thousand. Sabi ko, la, grabe, no? Madaming coins yun eh. Almost 10, 10 pesos ang binigay ko na coins. And then sabi ko, la, nag-grow ng ano? 1,000. So nung Sunday, wala na excited na ako. Sigo, effective, effective. Pumunta na doon. And then I, I saw yung lagayan ng love offering and then what happened is, kumuha ako sa wallet, I, I, watch, I, I got my wallet and then I put color orange. Oh, alam mo yung color orange, di ba? So nilagay ko yung color orange. Nanginginig ako, nanginginig. First time in my life, I, I gave paper bill, di ba? Paper, coins lahat eh paper bill and then nanginginig I'm shaking and I'm shaking and then nabitawan ko no nabitawan ko and then oh what a relief and then I noticed and then I went happy and then I noticed within the week within the week nagrow nagrow yung yung income ulit I I did the same thing the same activities walang binago sa business and what happened my side hustle and what happened is Nag-grow siya on almost 1,000, uh, 1,900 plus, almost 2,000. Sabi ko, I'm an engineer by profession, so I can see patterns. 10 pesos, 1,000. 20 pesos, 2,000. Eto na, sabi ko, this is it. I found the secret. And then the next, the third Sunday, I went there, full of excited, super excited ako. Sabi ko, this is it, this is it. Pagkuha ko dyan, Pagdating, alam mo, halos hindi na ako nakikinig kay Father, di ba? <laughs> Yan na totoo, no? So, I'm waiting for the love offering and then what happened is, love offering basket and what happened is, kumuha ako sa wallet ko. Anong kinuha ko? Yung tatlong tao. Grabe, di ba? Eto na. Sabi ko, sugal na to. <laughs> sugal na to. Ayan na. With my baby faith, no? As a, Christ, a baby Christian, ganun ko. Eto na, eto na. And then, I, paglagay ko, bang! Hindi na ako nanginginig. Hindi na ako nanginginig. Pinapawisan na ako. Diba? So, nabitawan ko din nung nabitawan ko. Ha, sabi ko, I'm so excited. Uh, Monday pa lang, Monday pa lang. I, I was expecting already. Wala. Wednesday, wala. Friday, I follow up my, my, my partners and all, all people involved. Wala. Natapos yung Sabado, wala. And then the fourth Sunday, I went there. I was very sad. I said, hindi ka pala totoo, Lord. Kasi parang nagulang ako doon. Lugi ako eh. <laughs> Lugi ako. And then, come Monday, 
Zamalob ko nun, honestly. Come Monday, I go work, I have a full-time job. And then at that time, I open the email as usual, as, you know, as all employees, open emails in the morning. And then what happened? My memo. My memo. Ang nakalagay sa memo, we, re- we will receive that day bonus. How much? Equal to, almost equal to my salary in a month salary. And it, everybody is happy and everybody is, yay, sh- sh- ano tayo, kain tayo sa labas. Alam mo what I felt? I, I'm, I'm crying. I'm crying at that time. As, as my little faith that I have, I'm crying at that time that God is really a promise maker. He really, he really tr- is really true in his word. Amen. So today, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to give to the Lord. To give to the Lord. To trust him more. Ito, we have an online giving. You can deposit here a fund transfer or a check in this bank details, Banco de Oro, Light of Jesus Family, Mega Manila, Makati, and Taguig District, Inc. And soon, and soon, we will have Jesus and Pay Maya facility soon. So watch out for that. So you can give on these details, no? Brothers and sisters, give. Give. Not for God. Give for yourself. Because you trust God and you love God and we can help more people here in this ministry. Thank you. And let's have some announcements before before we have, I uh, say bye-bye. Here's the first announcement. Can you flash, bro? The first announcement. Yeah. Join our uh, online light groups. Okay. This, ito yung sinasabi kong small groups after the live streaming. Just type LG or small group in the comment box section to join and a facilitator will reach out to you. This will, I believe, brothers and sisters, this is the deal maker in your journey to know God and follow Jesus, no? Um, this safe group will help you first fall in love with our Lord and second will help you also know Him more and follow Him more in, in step by step and helping others as well. So this is fun. This is, you will be more blessed. I am, no, wala na, grabe talaga. Yan. So join our online light group. Next, next announcement is this. Um, we have our weekend feast every morning, Sunday, and and every Sunday, 10.30 a.m. and 5 p.m. in the afternoon. Also, we have a Saturday session, no? Saturday session, 6.15. So, kahit anong time slot, kahit anong, anong session, you can join us. You can join us and be blessed. And you can share God's message of hope and love to as many people as you can by by sharing it, by tagging your family and friends. We also have a weeknight set feast. No? Kung meron tayong weekend feast, we also have a weeknight feast every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Sa weekend feast, sa Glorieta yan, sa SM Aura, sa Feast Shangri-La Plaza, sa weeknight feast, sa Feast Makati Salcedo, Feast Makati Ligaspi, and Feast, Light, Star Mall, Edsa, nandyan siya. So, join us. Weekend feast and weeknight feast. And you will be blessed. Bring your family and friends. And next announcement. Uh, we have our Hunger Club. Which we study the word every Mondays, 8 p.m. It's it's led by our dear sister, Risa Singson Kaupeng. And I believe you will be blessed every Monday, 8 p.m. Yan. And next, um, today, we every Saturdays and every Sundays, we have our Awesome Kids Ministry online. No? So join us, plug your, your kids there. It will, it will help them at their young age. It will help them know God and follow Jesus. Okay? Lag mo sila dyan. For sure, it will, you will be blessed. And brothers and sisters, as we end, I want to pray a uh, a short prayer to you, a blessing to you. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Father God, I pray for the person who is watching right now. I pray, Lord, for blessings. I pray, Lord, for protection and safety, Lord. Bless the, my friend's whole coming week. Guide him. Embrace him. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. See you next time. God bless you. If you're willing
this suffering and pain take them away from my hands but God if this burden and covers your plan I trust in your ways I'll take it with my own pain Oh, you.